Hello there, welcome back. Today I took another trip out with my friend Colin to one of his secret mushrooming spots. So if you're interested in wild edibles, come along. So what, what are these ones? They're called Jelly Babies. Jelly Babies? Yeah, and they look very, you've got to watch because they look very, very similar to a young winter chanterelle. Right. Or not. Are they poisonous or are they edible? They're just inedible. They're not, I don't think they're poisonous. But they're... So they're not, not a good one to eat? Nah. That's the, that's the old, that's the old one there. You'll see later on how much they do look like a... It looks so jelly-like. Yeah. Jelly babies. That looks like an old plums and custard. That's old a, plums and custard. It looks like an old, like it's an old one. Um, yeah, plums and custard, yeah. So is, is that one edible? No, that's another inedible one. Inedible. Yep. Tooth. One of the tooth fungus family. So that's a member of the tooth fungus family yeah, called hedgehog it's fungus. A hedgehog fungus. You can see it has got spi like spines, spines underneath. underneath yeah. And that's edible. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The older ones can be a bit better. What's that one called? That's a beechwood sickener. Beechwood sickener? Yeah, and it's a it's a member of the brittle gills. Oh yeah, it has got it's very the, brittle uh, gills, doesn't it? And if you if you try a bit, but don't ingest it, just put it on your tongue and then spit it out. Right. It's very peppery. I don't suggest everybody just goes willy-nilly trying mushrooms, but I know this. I know this. This what this one is. What's it called? Beechwood sickener. Beechwood sickener. It's just really, really peppery and thin. But it is another inedible one. Right. So you wouldn't eat that one. I wouldn't eat it, but if you try, if you just try a bit on your tongue, and just yeah. It's really different ingested. Spit it out. So it's it's inedible. It'll give you a stomach upset if you if you if you ingested it. That's all. Feels very slimy, doesn't it? Uh, it's inedible, but it's not going to kill you. Yeah. Whatever you do, you can try and mix that up with a fire in it. Mmm. Whoops. <laughs> Aye. It, it takes a few seconds to hit it, but it, it does taste very, very peppery. Almost like a mixture of salt and pepper. Yeah. We've come up a little steep path here. And right in the middle of the path is a huge beech tree. Look at that. Steep drop-offs to either side. It's almost like a gigantic bonsai with all these exposed roots and everything here just clinging on. Trying to so, 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 so the slime on this one makes it inedible? Well, no, the slime on it just makes it... makes you think that you don't want it here, but it is an edible one. Right. I wouldn't bother with it. It's what, what's a, that one called? Porcelain, it's what's left of a porcelain fungus after the slugs have been at it. Porcelain fungus? Yeah, it's just slime, no doubt. But it's set to be edible once you've washed the slime up. Well, I, mm, I couldn't fancy it. That's an unknown, is it? It's an unknown to me. Very nice looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if anybody has any ideas what that one is, stick it in the comments section. Yep. And that I've one's. Got, I've got a little hand group on it, it's quite a few of them in there. That looks like a woolly milk. Yeah. What do you think that one is? A, a, a milk cap? This is a woolly milk cap. Woolly milk cap. See how it's all wool? Just get it. It's all woolly underneath there. Oh, it is, isn't it? You know, the saffron milk cap is quite similar. It has like concentric rings of, of white and orange on it. Uh -huh. But the, the woolly milk cap has a white milk. In in Europe, they boil this and boil it and boil it and exchange the water to, to take the toxins out and they do eat it. Right. But we don't eat it here. No. 
some better ones out there. There's, there's an amethyst deceiver. Right. It's a nice example. It's got a lovely colour to it with a rear. It has, eh? And that's edible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure how well that's going to come out because it's dark as anything under these trees. We're actually under beech trees. Um, there's a few holly and there's also the occasional sycamore tree as well, but it's mostly beech. Actually, there's a few oak and uh, maybe seeing ash through there as well. All deciduous broadleaf trees. It's still firm. Right. It's well slug eaten in that area. Is it? That's a horn of plenty. Horn of plenty. Trumpet de mort, as you call it. Perhaps. Trumpet de mort. Trumpet of, trumpet of death. Trumpet of death? Yeah. It, just because it's black. Right. But it is an edible one. It's actually choice and edible. It's very, very, very good. Yeah, so that's what we're looking for in here. This place was riddled with some a few weeks ago and you know there's not many left right now that you could pick. Uh, I can see them around it. They are past the best, aren't they? Yeah. So that's a that's a that is a good example of one, isn't it? Yeah. Horn of plenty. Yeah. It's a beautiful looking fungus. You wouldn't think we would eat that. No. Yeah, Twenty-two pound a hundred grams in the, in the market in London last time I was there. Just say that again. How £22 much? Twenty-two pound a hundred grams in the London market, dried. Per one hundred grams. Dried. Twenty-two quid. Yeah. Gah. But bearing in mind my eighty-five litres that I picked, dried down to five hundred grams. Ah, right. Eighty-five <laughs> litres is a hell of a lot. Well, that was a backpack full of them. <laughs> So that one's the hedgehog fungus again. This the hedgehog fungus again. Oh, that is a nice example, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and the restaurants won't take them. They won't have them. No, no. What a shame. And they are. They, they stay nice and firm, and when they when they're cooked, but when they get to like that size, they tend to become a little bit bitter. Right. So when they're smaller like that and they're quite tight, they're, they're worse. Like so you really want them like that. These ones, the stump puff balls. Yeah, they're growing on that rotten log there. Yeah. They're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, it's stacks of them. Yeah. It's some fresh as well. Yeah, that's very fresh. Mm. It doesn't have much smell, that way. No. Yeah, it's, it smells fungusy yeah. like. But they're very nice, aren't they? Almost like a balloon when you get a balloon uh, filled with water and you get that like, little nipple on the bottom of it. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. That is an awful hole, that isn't it? You could break your leg in there. That's tragic. There's another one as well. Here's some that are growing on the remains of an ash tree. You take one of those off and let um, Colin have a look at it. Very slimy. I think that's possibly, well, I don't know, I'll be guessing it's something called Jew's ears or monkey's lugs. I'm not sure what the proper name is for them. I'll take that and let him have a look though. There's quite a few of them here. It's a hell of a landslip. Big old tree as well. God. I did find that on an ash tree. There was growing. There was a lot of them growing out like bracket fungus, but they're very, very soft and rubbery. Mm, looks like it looks like some sort of oysterling. Right. Yeah. Oysterling. Oysterling. Yeah. Oysterlings aren't edible. Oyster, just oyster fungus. Is that what they're also known as? No. Oyster no? fungus are different. These are smaller. Right. Wouldn't be edible, but I think it looks like an oysterling. That's not monkey's lugs, is it? I've never heard monkey's lugs before. <laughs> <laughs> not? No, it looks like the ears of something. Like like, oh, is there one called Jew's ears as well? Jew's ears, aye, but they grow on like elder. Ah, like right. Brown. Right. They're just, it just looked so Chinese, much like ears, you know? Chinese love eating the, the, uh, the Jew's ears. Like right, right. Or jelly ears is the code now. Jelly the, ears, aye, uh, yeah. That's it, yeah. Political correctness. Gone mad. There's a nation of horn of plenty here. Definitely, yep. See, there's the remains of one in the middle of the shot there. There's one in the middle of the shot there. They really do blend in very well. Look at this one. What a cracking example that one is. Beautiful fungi. Absolutely beautiful. I would say that's in pretty good condition there. This one feels pretty good. Yeah, it's a nice one. 
very good. You see there's still there's some like young ones starting to come through there, so it's So it's not finished yet, is it? No, you know that's a young one. one. Oh that one's nice. So is it worth picking any of those yeah, or no? We'll have to get, we'll yeah. try and get a few of Yeah. So that's what we've got just off that little bank side there. Yeah. Well, they are all pretty good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Horn of plenty. You know, you've really got to have your eye in to see them, haven't you? You know, especially with all the different colours of leaves that have landed. I mean, there's something there. There's been something there. There's another one over here. Not necessarily edible. But fungi nonetheless, and there's a quite a nice hedgehog fungus by the looks of it. Yep, definitely. I'm getting better at the ID. I do know that one now. So has this got them all in from the UK or Europe as well? Uh, it hasn't got them all in. It's sort of just a small like guide handbook that I sometimes carry about with us, you know. And what's the name of that one? It's Collins Wild Guide on Mushrooms and Toadstools. Collins Wild Guide, so you wrote it, didn't <laughs> no, you? No, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's got quite a bit of nice stuff in it. You know? I've got nice the, clear pictures as well, aren't they? I've probably got about 30, 40 books in the house on different mushrooms and stuff, you know. It's a nice pocket size one, though. Yeah. It, it tells you what time of the year they come out as well. Yeah, it does, it? Yep. and whether they're edible or not. Very good. Does it tell you how to prepare them to eat as well? Or it not? doesn't, no. no. So, is that a, a different type of football? Yeah. Left of a pedestal puffball, see it's quite a big one. Pedestal puffball. Yeah. Oh, right. Spines break off it. It has got little spines all over the top. Uh, it must be well chomped. That. Uh, you can notice a real difference, as you say, where the well, the heavy leaf litter is, and the moss is grown, and it's damp and foisty. It's fungus all over. And here, next to Colin, we've got some really big ones that hopefully he's going to be able to ID for us. <laughs> no? What? They're monsters. It looks similar to a blue one, but it's slimy and it's it's actually blue and slimy. It has got a, like a, a, a blue tint yeah. to it. I've never seen that before. It's almost like a purpley blue inside, yeah. isn't it? Like a violet. So that's the one you haven't seen before? No. Certainly doing well here. It's not a blue it like. Puff ball. Jelly, yeah. jelly babies there. Jelly babies there, yep. This is a good place for fungus. What's this big that's, lad down that's here? That's the same as that. That's the same, that's yeah. a monster, that's like a dinner plate. Hold that so we don't know what this, well I'm, I'm not going to know what it is, but at the moment Colin doesn't know what this one is, so that's any that's ID. More in depth any ID would be greatly appreciated. I mean, from there it looks like a field mushroom, doesn't it? Yeah, it's but not it's not, obviously. Either. Quite waxy on the top. At first I thought they were bluets, but they're not, they're not blue. See the inside there, it's like a, almost like a slate grey sort of a colour. It hasn't really got much of a smell either. That was a common buffball, the one we've seen before. Mm, common buffball? Yeah. Right. That was the stump buffballs we found. Pedestal, I think. So. The, the, the stump puff balls have more, pretty much like a not, a, not a proper nipple on the top, but a dark spot on the top, don't they? Yeah. I suppose that's, that's where the split that's from. A, Sorry, pestle. Pestle shape. Pestle shape. Pestle, pestle puff pestle It shape. wasn't a pestle, it was a, it was a common one we just found. Right. Just growing out the ground here are some tiny little earth tongues. And um, Colin found some similar things in the last video. And they turned out to be dead moles fingers. These are the proper earth tongues. Are these ones edible? Yeah. The common earth tongues black. Oh, common earth tongues black? Yeah. These are definitely like a brownie colour, like a tawny yeah. colour, aren't they? It's not nothing like boots or leather in that. No, so it's an earth tongue of some description. Oh, the basket. By God, aye, that would practically fill the basket. All the way down there, big ring in it. Hedgehog fungus. Yeah. 
God, this is awfully wet in here. It's just like a proper bog. Ah, is that what a winter chanterelle looks like? Yeah. Should get a lot more of them on the other side. They're beautiful. They are lovely. They look quite clean as well. Yeah. Right. They're totally different to the ordinary yeah. chanterelles. Yep. You could, you could, I mean, if you look at the gills, though, they're very similar, you know, they're not actual gills, they're like, just like ridges. Yeah, yep. That's a good example of the gills there. Uh, so they're more like ridges. Perfect. Yeah. Dog, what are you doing? You'll cause another landslide, dog. If you look at them very close by, the jelly babies, you can see how a young one of uh, one of them, a young one of them, and look like a one of them. So that's one of the jelly baby ones. Mm -hmm. That's a young winter chanterelle. Yeah. It's very similar, yeah. isn't it? So many types of fungus about. I have no idea what that is, but it's very, very nice. Possibly not an edible one. I don't know. And Colin's away on a rampage, so. He's not here to ID this for me. Some really spindly looking ones here. Look at that, come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Absolutely hellish. Nice little ring there. You're standing in it, man. The fairies will come and get you. The fairies took it years ago. That one there is a milk cap of some description. That one's a milk cap? Yeah. See, it'll, it'll... Oh, yeah. Yep. It's dripping out. Yeah, what they about look, these they look like some sort of funnel cap. Oh, look how thick that is. It's like as thick uh, as your arm. That's some sort of funnel cap. Yeah. Edible or not, do you think? Nah, we'll no, no. Don't them, boys. I'd imagine they'd disintegrate in the pan as well if you did try and yeah. cook them. Right? Talking of crossing spot, God, the deer have been absolutely charging up here. What, I mean that that's a proper game trail that maybe it doesn't come out on the camera but you can see all of the the toes here that's the reason all of the deer have been kicked all over, isn't it? Ah, there's a lot of fungus kicked all over the place up there there's been some deer in these woods yeah. what do you reckon yeah down onto there and stone jump and across yeah. that'll do it <laughs> Oh, you're all right. I'll just, I'll just jump onto there. Is it? Oh yeah. I wouldn't like to fall down there. So that's what we're looking for in here. Yeah. Winter chanterelles. Just have a look at the top of them there. Oh. I hope the spot with the leaf litter. They are, that's so similar to a lot of these fallen leaves. So when would the winter chanterelle come up? From from now till what, December or something? November, first frost green, and then that all. Right, so just a month or so really. So October through November. First frost, knackered. Even in here, we've got three different types of fungus. We've got the amethyst deceiver. We've got what looks like the startings of a birch polypore, or razor strop fungus, grown in the fallen silver birch. And at the top here, what have we got there? Oh, that's another polypore fungus. I thought that was a, I thought that was freestanding, but it's not. So we had two different types there. I think that is what we're after, winter chanterelle. Yep, I would say that's what that was. I'll let Colin make the final ID on that, but I think that's a winter chanterelle. Yeah, that's definitely what these are, winter chanterelle. And once you spot one, you spot quite a few. There's a lot knocked over, there must be a hell of a lot of deer in here. 
Well, there's either a lot of deer or a lot of blind mushroom hunters kicking them over. <laughs> oh, they're nice ones, eh? Mm. They're much bigger than what I've found. Uh, I mean, they're tiny compared to the ones you're finding. Right. I was getting them off that steep bank side, though. Uh, I was just about to ask you whether the, the winter ones were smaller, but they seem to be about the same size as the ordinary chanterelles. There's another one. Awesome. That's a good example of one. Here's an example of how well they blend in. I'll just put that down there. Just step back. They do stand out once you get your eye in, eh? But I mean that, if you're just casually walking along, that is indistinguishable from the leaves. And yet that's a highly prized fungus. That is a big and that's a good one. That basket is looking a lot healthier than on our last hunt. No, I 10 minutes ago and on our last hunt, when you had a tiny beefsteak fungus. Set. It was a set before a DS stamp on it. Oh. I'm still having it, like, because it's got no worm in it. Is that a sort of Belitus? Yeah, Belitus edulis. Belitus edulis? Edulis. Edulis? Yeah, it's really highly prized. Now, I don't know where the rest of the mushroom's gone, because... You normally get them in a ring, do you? No, or in a clump? Well, that's a, that's a brown birch Belitus. It's the same species, that one. It's well. a nice one as well. Yeah. And a chanterelle right a chanterelle. next to it. I'm, I'm looking for the rest of the cat that's left. It's been kicked off by a deer. Oh, man. They are all over the place here. You're not going to be able to see it on the camera, but, oh man, they're just all over the place. Watch, Colin will start picking them. And I better help him as well, because it's starting to rain. <laughs> It's looking pretty good in here. Oh, look at that. That's a proper harvest. Right, where's the sun? Just for reference, this is a north facing bank side. A lot of moss on the ground and it's mostly birch trees. Although there is a few beech around. This is really a birch patch. The ground's pretty clear apart from all the moss and the odd bit of grass and we're finding loads of chanterelles here. They're all over the place here and really, compared to the woods around my place, this is just a total abundance of all sorts of fungi. The woods around my place that we went to in the last video were an embarrassment compared to here. And most of the ones that were found there were poisonous or inedible. Most of the ones we're finding here are either slightly inedible or edible. The vast majority are edible. And according to the people in the French restaurant who take these, they're very tasty as well. That's one of the ones we identified in the previous video, Fly Agaric. There's a young one there, just starting to get its colour. And this one looks more like a, a ball of um, a sort of cheese called Edam that has like a reddish wax over it. And it has holes in it. <laughs> It's like a love of Edam cheese. Come on. Come on. Leave the pheasants alone. Well, that's it. And that is a good basket of edible fungi. A bit of weight in there as well. So now it's off to the restaurant. Colin's going to shoot in and see what he can get for these and then we're on our way home. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you've liked it, hit the thumbs up, share it wherever you want. If you're not subscribed, subscribe if you want to. If you're not bothered about subscribing, then please visit my channel. Check out all the other videos on there. There's a nation of different subjects and hundreds of videos. So until next time, goodbye. Something in my basket, not like last.
thing. Yeah, it was embarrassing last time, wasn't it? No, we still found some good stuff. Let's fill that basket up. <laughs> There's so many poisonous ones in the woods around mine, though. It's like the, the woods of evil yeah. compared to here. Oh. <laughs> He would rather risk his life swimming over there than be carried by me. I think the only thing that's filling the basket so far is leaves. Yep. <laughs> How come we always seem to come out when it's either lashing down or totally dark? You think we're doing this in the middle of the night? Yeah, yeah. Just over there, Colin, there's a hell of a patch. Like There has been all along this bank side, but I just... As I was crawling around here, I looked over the edge. It's like a hundred foot drop down there. Oh. I nearly crapped myself. Ha, 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 ha,